obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of age. As we continue celebrating Missions Month, this morning, let's talk about missions. But rather talking about world missions, I know world mission is very important, and Pastor Dan and Bukso and even um, Pastor um, Raval also talk about uh, missions. And I can remember Pastor Dan's talking about um, missions and missionaries and how hard um, their job is and we need to support them through prayers that they may persevere and even for protection and I know that this um, world mission is very important as we remember them remember people that we're sending to a remote place or maybe place that this um, which is Jesus Christ is not known but also we have to remember that this church TLCC has a mission. We have a task, we have a goal to do, and somehow it saddens me when I think about um, sometimes we lack of doing missions or doing things that God wants us to do rather than we get comfortable sitting here and just um, singing praise to God. I mean, that, those things are good, but sometimes we forget that God also commanded us to do certain things. And this morning, I would like to highlight two things that we need to personally do our mission. Our mission as a church, as part of body of Christ. What are the things that we need to do? But before that, we all know that our, um, um, our situation here on earth is not getting comfortable, but rather it's getting worse. We can see news that there's war everywhere. And um, even... A lot of things are not been solved, like we just um, experienced a pandemic with COVID, wars, economic crisis, and even when you go to social media or in news, you can see that things here on earth is getting worse and worse. And for us Christians, we're not surprised because even the Bible would say that Jesus Christ told us when all these things would be happening, this would be our sign that... Um, he is coming back. And so for us, it gives comfort. But for, for others who doesn't hope, who doesn't have relationship with Jesus Christ, they're living here on earth in the middle of crisis, middle of problems, economic crisis, wars, or whatever it is, pandemic, by not having hope because they don't even know who Jesus is. I mean, they know Jesus in their minds, but they don't have this relationship with Jesus Christ just like us. I mean, we can enjoy being in our problems because we know and we are um, floating into the comfort that Jesus Christ is with us and He has promised us and we all know that all things here on earth or we are just passing by and our permanent residency is in heaven and we have that hope in Jesus Christ but for others, they don't have that kind of hope. But here's the thing, we have the solution. We have Jesus, and even Jesus Christ commanded us to tell people about the solution, and that is Jesus Christ dying on that cross. But the question is, what are we doing with this truth that we have? So this morning, I want us to make it personal, especially when we celebrate Mission Month, and not just this month, but we have to put in mind that we have a mission here on earth. We're not just living here on earth to live a comfortable life or to satisfy our needs or to survive, but we are here on a mission. And as we have read that passage earlier, even Jesus Christ really commanded us to share him, or he commanded us to go and make disciples and tell people about his great love for them and for us. Again, let me read to you Matthew chapter 28, and it says, All authority in heaven and earth, Jesus declared. He said, Therefore, and go and make disciples all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
So we have to share, we have to tell people about Jesus Christ and then baptizing them. And he continued, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. So it doesn't end with evangelism, but we have to make disciples telling people that we need to follow, we need to obey God. And Jesus Christ promises, and he says, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of age. And there's the comfort that we can have, that even we experience a lot of things here on earth, but Jesus Christ would always be with us, especially because we're obeying him. So the two things I want to highlight for us, TLCC, to make it personal for us to really do our mission. What are the things, what are, what are these two things? Our mission, personal mission, to help our church or to expand the kingdom of Jesus Christ. First is we need to obey God. And second, we need to be united. Let me repeat that. First, we need to obey God. Secondly, we need to be united. So first thing, obedient or to be or to obey God. Our mission here in Till CC, our mission is to obey God. And there's a lot of things that Jesus Christ or God has commanded us to do. To do good things, help poor, help the poor, um, help the church and whatever it is. But this month, when we celebrate missions, I would like to highlight or specify this command of Jesus Christ. We, we just read that verse a while ago in Matthew 28. We're commanded to first to share Christ. Evangelism. We need to share Christ. As Jesus Christ said when he was telling his disciples to go and make disciples, that is our entry point of telling people to obey God or um, encouraging people to understand God and to obey Him and to obey the things that He wants us to do. First, we have to share Christ, who Christ is and what He has done for us. And we all know because it is impossible for us to call ourselves Christians if we don't know what makes us Christians. What makes us Christians is when we believe that Jesus Christ is the only the one who can save us from our sins. And because of sin, that Jesus Christ himself died on that cross. And we have to accept that. And now that is, this is our task, our mission as a church to tell people about it. Wherever we are placed, in, workplace, in our workplace, in our school, or abroad, or wherever we are, we need to share Christ. But the question is, does God really or Christ really need us? To share? Why does God command us to share? I mean, come to think of it, if God is so powerful, if God is almighty, all-knowing, I mean, I don't know if, if we love to uh, watch movies here, but we can see a lot of um, extraordinary things in movies like Th Thanos. And even we could think that God can just could snap his finger and convert everyone else, right? If he is so powerful, why does not God does not do that? Just snap his finger or maybe just command that everyone here on earth would be converted or anyone, everyone here on earth would know him. But instead, God didn't do that. But instead, God gave us the mission. He gave us the mission of reconciliation. He gave us the task to do that for him. And later on, uh, we would like, I would like to elaborate about that being used by God but open your Bibles in Acts chapter 1 and 8 it says Jesus Christ said before he went to heaven he says but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and he said you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth and let me repeat that. It says, you will be my witnesses. And it is very clear that God has given us this um, mission or message or give us this task of reconciliation, being a witness of Him. 
Before he says Jerusalem, Judea, and now in Samaria, and now he says to the ends of the earth. But sometimes we think um, that it's just the um, pastor's work or the task of the pastor to tell or to be a witness. But it is very clear that when Jesus Christ commanded us, even from Matthew, that all of his disciples, all of his followers, all who believe in Christ, and if we claim that we are Christians, believer of Christ, followers of Christ, then we are ought to do these things to share Christ, to be a witness of Christ. I mean, God specifically for us personally and even for this church TLC he commanded us and give us this mission the message of Jesus Christ and even in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 it says 20 to 21 so we are Christ ambassadors we represent Christ God is making his appeal through us we speak for Christ when we plead come back to God when we share the good news when we tell people about Jesus Christ that we need to go back to him that we need to have a restored relationship with him for God made Christ who never sinned to be an offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Jesus Christ I mean this is our task to even plead to tell people to come back to God to believe in Jesus Christ to accept His grace, to accept His love. It is not just our task to sing praise and worship every Sunday. Yes, that thing is good. We can worship God, give Him all the glory and honor. But it's not just about Sunday, coming here every Sunday, listening to the, to the message of Jesus Christ. It's not just about reading the Word of God. Amen to that. If you read the Word of God, it's not just about praying every day. Amen to that. If we pray to God every day, but it is also about doing what God wants us to do with our lives, to share, to be an ambassador, to be a representative of Christ, to be a channel of His goodness and His love to other people. But sometimes, most of us, I mean a lot of Christians fail to obey God. Why do most Christians fail to obey God? Because a lot of Christians take note of this. Maybe it includes ourselves. A lot of Christians wake up every knowing, every morning, not knowing, not having in our mind that God has something to do for me this day. We wake up, every, but rather we wake up in, in the morning thinking or having in mind, I want to do something for myself. We wake up in the morning not even recognizing that there's this God who reigns above us. Sometimes we wake up in the morning thinking about our problems, how to solve these things and that, and etc. And sometimes we get sidetracked of the things that we want. How can I please myself? And all these things, because of that, God becomes the means and not the end. It's not about having God anymore. It's not about how to please God anymore. It's not about I want God. It's about how can God help me? And there's a lot of Christians Sad to say, there's a lot of Christians here on earth going to church, mostly thinking, <coughs> excuse, <clears throat> that I would go to church so that God could help me with these things. God becomes the means and not the end. We don't want God anymore. We want him to help us. I want to be successful in my business, so that's why I go to church. 
I want to have a happy, happy family, and I know our church could help that. I could send my children to Sunday school so that they could teach, teach my children. I want to be successful in life, and that's why I go to church. I pray, Lord, help me. Lord, I want to have a obedient children. That's why we go to church every Sunday so that they would know God. And again, God becomes the means and not the end. And it should be other way around. Every day we wake up in the morning, we want God more rather than the earth, rather than the things here on earth. And sometimes we could say that because when this happened, sometimes problem would strike us or maybe things doesn't go our way. We tend to question God, why, Lord? I mean, I'm serving you, Lord, through praise and worship. Lord, I'm going to Sunday every day. I attend Bible study every Wednesday, every Thursday, and every Friday. So how come it happened to me, Lord? Why? Because we think of when we serve God, we get rewarded. When we serve, when we do things for God, He gave us favor. But as you can see, even while we were still sinner, God already poured His favor, favor upon us when He sent Jesus Christ, who died on that cross just to save us so that we could have restored relationship with Him, so that we could have a re wonderful relationship with God, so that we could enjoy His presence every day, so we could be comforted every day. We should rethink of all those things. We should think it differently. When we serve God, we have to think that this is our reward. Our reward is when we serve God and all those things that God would bless us with a lot of things that's just bonus. But first and foremost, when we serve God, this is our reward. Imagine the most, um, like for example, president, or maybe there's someone you know that is high ranking. You see the honor of serving that person, and that person would come to you, maybe the president, and would tell you, oh, you do this in your church, and you, you do something like this. Like it's our honor because we know who he is. And now, here comes God, which we believe, who created the heavens and the earth, that we believe the most powerful being, that we believe the all-knowing God, telling us to do this and and now it becomes a burden to us we don't want to go to church we don't want to share because it becomes a burden to us we don't have this mindset of when god commanded us to do this is our reward i mean imagine god talking to us imagine all those people or those character in the bible when god um told abraham abraham i have something to do for you and he said imagine that when God would tell tell us that I have something to do for you I mean who are we all I know we're just sinner a filthy human being I mean we don't deserve God I mean he is God he's a holy God you and I and I think everyone is guilty. We're just sinner. We're nothing before God. But then God poured upon His grace upon us, His love, and He restored our relationship, and He restored, and He gave us a family, a church. We belong now to a one body. And now He says He wants to use us. I mean, that's an honor. A privilege not a burden serving God is our reward we just have to know more about God and who he is so that we could serve him I mean this is our mission as a church here in TLCC we need to share Christ and when we share Christ that is our reward being used by him knowing our status before him we're just human being but now we have the authority to be used 
by the most powerful being, our God, our Father, our King, our Lord, whom we worship every day. And I hope we change our mind, especially in, in doing things here on earth. We need to put in our minds and our heart that God has something to do for us every day, and that is to share. Share Christ to our loved ones. I mean, that's the goal. We wanted to see people, especially our loved ones, our friends, to be just like us, having a wonderful relationship with God, serving Him, loving Him, knowing that our God loves us first, we wanted, especially for someone, especially our loved ones, our friends, or other people, seeing them being saved, knowing the wonderful truth about Jesus Christ. At sometimes we fail to do that because the problem is we are not united. Sometimes we just think for ourselves, and that's, that leads us to our second point. That our mission here in Ch in TLCC, our mission as a church is to be united. And I would like to direct everyone into this passage in John chapter 17. This is the prayer of Jesus Christ, but I would like, just like to um, jump in 20 to 23. So this is Jesus Christ praying for his disciples and for all the believers let me clarify that and jesus christ before he went back to heaven he was praying to the father and asking this favor to the father he was praying not only for his disciples but even for us and even for the future christians he says my prayer is not for them alone this is jesus christ praying i pray also for those who will believe in me that's us, through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they be also in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Say such a word, a weird prayer from Jesus Christ. I mean, thinking, here we are in church planning on how can we reach out, how to do missions. And there's a lot of things that we wanted to do, like feeding, like going to remote places, doing DVBS. I mean, all those things are good. And sometimes we would like to direct people in the Bible and telling them one-on-one. -on -one. And sometimes we want to let people see mir miracles. Sometimes we just wanted to, I just wanted my friend to see that there's miracles or Jesus can still do miracles so that they would believe in Jesus Christ. But here is Jesus Christ praying to the Father, saying that they may be one, just as you and I, and I and them, and we would be one, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Being united comes People believing in Jesus Christ, being first and foremost us united in Jesus Christ and in the Father through believing in Him and accepting in Him. And now for us, church, to be united so that our friends, our, our families, people would come to believe Jesus Christ. And that's one of the key to, to let people know about Jesus Christ, being united and hope and pray that is our mission here in TLCC. I know we had a lot of things, a lot of differences. But come on, church, we need to be united. And being united, I have a wonderful illustration with this. Sometimes I, I really love sports. And to be specific, I love basketball. And sometimes I would be amazed on how unity can win games. I mean, if you know your part, what your part is, if you're a rebounder or you're a passer or maybe you're the shooter or maybe you screen so that your um, teammate can shoot. But if you are united, if this team would be united, 
they could win games. And we can see that even if you um, watch NBA or PBA, you can see if they're united by passing the ball, trusting each other, they would really put some score and sometimes they would win. As you can see, as a team, there's this common goal. So unity does not develop when we try to develop unity. But unity develops when we share the same goal. We share the same mission. We have something in common. And when that thing, that common thing that unites, or that thing that commons that we want, it unites us to do things. And there's a lot of things that were common when we said we're Christians. We believe that our God loves us so much. Amen? That's one thing common. We believe that our Jesus Christ died for our sins, that He saved us. And we believe that Jesus Christ commanded us to go and make disciples. And that is our goal, to having this mission of sharing. We wanted people to know about Christ. We wanted our friends, our family to know about Christ. And that is our common goal. And when we and that goal becomes our obsessions, unity would come. We don't care about our differences because we just wanted to let people know. We just wanted to do our mission. We just wanted to please God. We just wanted to glorify God. That is our common goal and that's, what, that's the reason why we de develop unity. And even in verse 23, it says, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is weird, right? When Jesus Christ said, if we are united, then the world will believe that God the Father sent Jesus Christ to save them. Being united is one of the key. And I hope and pray that is one of our mission. Obeying God, but most importantly, to be united, having that obsession with our common goal, glorifying God, worshiping Him, doing our mission, obeying the things that He has commanded us. But sometimes we get sidetracked of the things that we want. And that's the reason why our, the command of God, our goal, do not become our obsession. We become obsessed on how to live here on earth that we all know that we're just passing by. I mean, we want to reach out to people. Amen? Amen? We want to tell them. We want to, them to also experience what we experience every day. Having the comfort of being to the arms of our Father. So we want to be united because we want people to be saved. We can't be united when we think of, we want to be united. We have to think of, I have to glorify my Father in heaven. I have to obey Him and use this goal, common goal, with our brothers and sisters and do things telling people about Him. So our missions, our mission here in TLCC to make it personal is to obey God to share Jesus Christ, and to be united. And I know there's a lot of things that God would command us to do, but let's settle for that two things first. Let us exert more effort to being obedient to God, to share Christ wherever we are, and to be united using that common goal to fuel us to be united in Him. And I would like to end this sermon with this passage which is a previous passage of John 17 
verse 16 to 19. This is still Jesus Christ praying. And it says in verse 16, They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. And this is the beautiful part. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Let me repeat verse 18. It says, Just as you sent me in the world, Jesus Christ talking to the Father and saying, Father, just as you sent me to this world, and I, have, I did my part. I did missions. I went everywhere telling people to obey God, baptizing them, do miracles things so that people would know you. And now Jesus Christ telling us, telling his disciples, telling us, I am sending them to the world. Now Jesus Christ did his part, and now he is sending us to this world. You and I, we were sent by God, telling people or doing the things that he wants us to do. Making disciples, sharing who he is, doing good to those who need good, helping people to those who need help, telling people about the love of Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray that we would put that in our minds and in our hearts and live by it every day, knowing Jesus Christ did his part as the Father sent him. And now it is our time because Jesus Christ also sending us to this broken world. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for your wonderful world, word this morning, Lord. The message for this world to be known that you are God. Sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die in our behalf so we could have a restored relationship with you, Lord. But Lord, I pray that as we know more of you, Lord, we will be obedient. And also, Lord, may it be, Lord, do you want to just glorify you and give you the honor that you deserve, Lord. Lord, we want to please you, Lord, so I pray that may you use us, Lord, to be an ambassador of you, to share people about your great love and your mercy and your grace to them, Lord, just as you have shown to us, Lord. I pray that may you use our tiny life, Lord, here on earth to glorify you, Lord. And I pray, Lord, especially for us, for our church here in Phil CC, Lord, to be united, Lord, not because we want to be united, Lord, but because, Lord, we wanted people to know you. We wanted people, Lord, to share the same faith as we have, Lord. So I pray that we'll be united, Lord, and be fueled with our common goal, Lord, and that is to obey and to, and to share who you are and what you have done on that cross, Lord. I pray, Lord, that as we live here on earth, Lord, may it not be, Lord, that it's not just about us, but we would think, Lord, it's always have to be you, and how can we glorify you, Lord? We thank you, Lord, for loving us, and we love you, Lord. We'd like to give you back all the glory and honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Nico, for sharing us that uh, reminder again of the command of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is for us to go into all nations and make disciples of them. And this morning, we are so happy that we have one sister here to be baptized and uh, being reminded of the command that in 
for us to go into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them everything I have commanded you, and lo, I'll be with you even to the end of the age. So this morning, we're happy that we have a one, uh, Sister Ali, to be baptized. Uh, she is with the Chinese group, so forgive me if I will have to speak some Chinese as I will be baptizing her, okay? So uh, may I now request Ali to come, Sister Ali? Chadi, right, how I'll ask uh, Sister Ali two questions. Uh, one of that is that, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? The second one is that from this time on, are you willing in front of God and all these witnesses to live for him uh, uh, from this time on? Okay. Ali, Tibe, Ali, can you tell me about this recording in Q2? Yes. 对待以后，伫上帝面前，甲伫跩啊兄弟姊妹跩人面前，你甘愿为着主耶稣伫遐来活？是。叫你会见证吼，请你过来。阿弟姊妹，叫你会见证，我现在奉圣父、圣子、圣灵的名，甲你受洗。特别上帝，我将阿弟姊妹特别交托在你手中。伊既然已经接受你，明白你做伊个人的救助，愿主底下引出大量伊最面的道路。特别主，何伊继续追求，那更加明白你，啊，甚至主，何伊对待以后，为着主你来活，愿主你祝福阿弟姊妹，伊的生命。予伊有法通做你嘅见证，伊无论伫倒落，你继续甲伊三甲地地，阮安尼祈祷，奉耶稣名，阿门，阿门。张希康，感谢，感谢。啊、uh, ，I'll introduce to you、uh, Sister Ali Lee. Oh, and、uh, actually she will、uh, be joining us、oh, by God's grace to be joining us in our Wednesday. Uh, Hanbun in Chinese, our, our Chinese Bible study. So continue to pray for her and continue to uplift her with your prayers as she continues to seek the Lord and grow in her、uh, spiritual experience with the Lord. Thank you.